Hey YouTube, um, I saw the Green Lantern uh, this weekend, and so I, I thought I'd pop on and give you a little bit of a review of this, um, because, well, with trailer number one uh, and the Rotten Tomatoes score, uh, I really went into this with extraordinarily low expectations. Um, and I was saying up for this to be like, one of the worst, sorry, one of the worst uh, comic book movies since, like, Batman and Robin, by the looks of it. Um, and I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. Um, now, I, I'm i a fan of the comics. I love the comics. Um, I... I even have a few of the comics on my iPhone. Um, and I can see where non-fan... where people who aren't fans of the comics wouldn't like it. Um, there is... A, a lot of the key plot points um, that don't necessarily pertain to this film, but the continuity of the Green Lantern movie. Um, if it becomes a franchise, it will become a franchise, but um, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that's, uh, how shall we say, um, deliberate fan service. Um, there's, I, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers for a little bit, uh, when I'm going to get into spoilers, I'll tell you so you can turn it off. Um, but I'll, I'll give you my full rating then. Um, before then, I should say. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of tired and this is just stream of consciousness. But a, a, lot, of, a lot of the stuff that's dealing with Sinestro... Um, and a lot of the stuff that deals with Oa and the core, uh, a lot of that, is, they kind of expect you to know where they're going with it. Um, and if you don't, you're going to be lost. Um, like I, I watched, uh, I watched Brad Jones's review uh, of the midnight screening. Uh, and he just slammed this movie. The, the cinema snob. He just slammed this fucking movie. Um, and I can understand why. Because most of it, like, as a fan of the comics, I, you get a line to kind of guide you, but if you're not, and you don't pay absolute, like, dead focus attention to some of the uh some of the parts of the movie you are going to be so lost so lost um so i i i think that the movie is is made for fans now a few of the pleasant surprises in this um Ryan Reynolds does a surprisingly good Hal Jordan I thought that he was going to be the the low point of the movie going in. Um, I was wrong. He he held it together, um, and those moments like where he's uh, where he's you know being a playboy and getting up out of bed and all that. Uh, what you saw in the trailer is the full extent of that scene, and the same goes for all the kind of like trite bullshit, like uh, this guy's playing Hal Jordan kind of shit. Um, and in the movie, it actually makes a lot more sense, and it doesn't it doesn't seem so kind of grown worthy, like when he uh, when he shows the suit to his friend, uh, for example, uh, that that works better in the movie than it does in the trailer. In the trailer, it it was one of the things that made me not want to see the movie, um, and in the full context of the scene in the movie, I I thought that 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 worked really well. So whoever cut the trailer for Green Lantern is first on my should-be-fired list. 
and that list is coming when I uh, when I start getting into spoilers. Believe me. Um, but I can't I can't talk about Ryan Reynolds doing a bang up job without mentioning that Mark Strong's Sinestro steals the show. Um, in kind of the same way that Kevin Bacon, or not Kevin Bacon, uh, Kevin Klein, Klein, uh, in the same way that Kevin Klein stole A Fish Called Wanda. Um, if you've seen A Fish Called Wanda, it, it has John Cleese and Jamie Lee Curtis and all these, and, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis actually has the, the lead role, but it's Kevin Klein's movie. Um, Green Lantern is Mark Strong's movie. Uh, every moment that Sinestro was on the screen, I was in the moment. Every single time that he was off screen, I wanted him to come back. Um, so truly, hats off to Mark Strong. Uh, they even got, uh, they even really nailed uh, the tension between Sinestro and the Guardians. Um, like if if you're not familiar with the comics. Um, the, the Guardians of Oa are the ones that started the Green Lantern Corps, uh, and Sinestro is kind of a leader of the Corps, um, and he is, he, he gets referred to several times in the comic as the best Green Lantern, um, but him and the Guardians are always kind of at odds, and that really came across... Uh, well in the movie, um, and it was incredibly understated. So that that is purely Mark Strong, um, plain Sinestro, Martin Campbell, and whoever the animation team was on the Guardians. They did a bang-up job, um, at least with Sinestro's arc. Uh, it, in fact, if this movie wasn't the Green Lantern and was like, the, the galactic tales of Thal Sinestro. Um, I I'd easily give this movie an eight or nine out of ten. Uh, as it stands, though, I I kind of have to give it a six. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, Pierce Sarsgaard as Hector Hammond. Um, solid. Um, but definitely not one of the most remarkable performances in the piece. Uh, I even thought Blake Lively's Carol Ferris was a lot better and more interesting. Uh, and that's another thing. Blake Lively's been gaining a lot of shit. I'm gonna stick up for, uh, I'm gonna stick up for her. She did a remarkably good job with what little Carol Ferris was in that script. Um, she did a really good job as Carol Ferris. Um, I, I'd even go so far as to say, uh, and I'm, I'm going to appeal to my own authority as, as the, uh, the resident, um, Violet Lantern or, or Star Sapphire, should I say, in my little clique of friends. Um, yeah, uh, Blake Lively's Carol Ferris was good, uh, but Peter Sarsgaard, um, okay, Hector Hammond really wasn't important um, and really wasn't interesting. Uh, like, it, it worked. It was okay. Um, but, like I said, uh, I, cared, I cared a lot more about what was going on on Oa, what was going on with Sinestro and the Guardians. Um, to some extent, I cared more about, you know, what what's going on with Parallax, even though that kind of ties into uh, the Hector Hammond stuff. But I I really don't know if, if it's the fact that the character was unnecessary or that Mark Strong just really made an impression on me um, in a big, bad way. But... I I would I would easily have preferred a hell of a lot more uh Sinestro than Hector Hammond. Uh and I think that Green Lantern 2 is going to benefit 
very much um, from Mark Strong as Sinestro being kind of front and center as the as the primary antagonist because uh, Sinestro is not a villain; he's an antagonist. There's a difference. There's a difference, I tell you. Um. So I I'd say six out of ten. Uh, if you are not a fan of the comics, uh, and you want to see it, I'd say get a little bit familiar with the mythology. Um, you know, f- figure if you don't know if you don't know what I'm referring to when I say uh, Sinestro, Oa, or the Guardians. Um, research those three. Just read the Wikipedia article on those three, uh, and you should be fine seeing this movie. Um, and you should kind of have a good time. Uh, if you're a fan of the comics, then this movie was made for you. Uh, and I would very much recommend going against the tomato meter and going to check this out. Um, there's plenty of room for improvement. It's not as good as Secret Origins was, um, by any stretch of the imagination. But it's it's a solid uh, superhero movie, uh, and I'd even go so far as to put it in the same class as the first Spider-Man movie. All right, now we're getting into spoilers. So if if you uh, if you don't want any spoilers, turn this off. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the. Uh, the missing four in that rating system here. Uh, so you've been warned. So three, two, one, here they come. Um, I already said, like, first on my hit list of should be fired. Um, I'm going to go directly to number two. Whoever the director of photography was and the art director, someone needs to fire their ass in a big bad way. A lot of the art direction in this movie is bullshit. Um, I, I get that it's the Green Lantern. There's going to be a lot of green. But we're talking like it every frame in this movie, even when there's no business for any green, there is green. And not just green, but fucking, like, Batman Forever, Joel Schumacher levels of neon green. Um, and, you know, I, it makes sense, it makes sense in places like Oa. Um, like, uh, it also makes sense when, uh, when he's in his costume. It makes sense on the ring. It makes sense in all of these places. But the green goes beyond that. The green, the green literally goes where it has no business going. Uh, and the one thing that kind of like really sticks in my mind is when Hector Hammond is first being taken uh, into uh, into that government facility to uh, to dissect Abensur, and and he's about to get infected by uh, by Parallax. Um, there is a hallway in there. And I know a lot of you are going to say nitpicky. Uh, a lot of you are going to accuse me of, of being like overly harsh and critical over you know such such a little thing like this. But keep in mind this is one example. Uh, and this is just like the first example that comes to mind. And just imagine for a second how gaudy and that shit insane this is. Um, so, Angela Bassett, I think, uh, comes out uh, and meets with Peter Sarsgaard, Hector Hammond, and kind of pseudo-explains. But the corridor that she comes out of is like this... Um, it, it's, a rounded, it's a rounded hallway. It's like she's walking through a cylinder. But that cylinder has... All around it, like spaced about three feet apart, tubes of neon green going around it. 
I couldn't take my fucking eyes off of that when when I saw that. My only thoughts were, why? That makes no fucking sense. It, I, I think one person kind of equated it to it, it looking like she was stepping out of a green sewer, um, which I thought was kind of funny. But I'm I'm sticking with the Batman Forever thing because that's really the only thing that I can compare this to. Because uh, if it if it's light, it's fucking neon, and if it's green, you better believe it's fucking neon. And green is one of those colors that really sticks out. Um, so my my question, like, okay, if you're building a top secret military facility, why green? Okay? Uh, and why fluorescent neon tubes of green, space like three feet apart, that go all around the wall and ceiling? Why would you do that? And why green? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Now, I, I said before, like, I get this is the Green Lantern and that there was going to be a lot of green in the color palette. Um, still doesn't excuse there being green where there really is no business being green. Uh, but if they wanted to go with the color palette thing, what they could have done, that would have been, like, just as insane when you try and apply it real world but would be less insane when you're thinking about it um, as a, a filmmaker or in, as a DOP, is yellow. Hector Hammond is about to become infected by Parallax, the yellow fear entity. Why not foreshadow it with yellow? If, if you're going to go in that, in that direction with, like, neon-saturated color palette, um, and kind of beat stuff a little bit over the head, why not do it in a way that's a little clever and, and possibly makes a bit more sense? Um, if you're going to go for, like, the Batman Forever style art direction, why not go there? Why not go that route? Um, it, it, it would have been... I, I wouldn't say it would have been a clever little bit of foreshadowing, um, but it would have been slightly clever as foreshadowing. Um, there's a lot more kind of colors to work with. Like when you're dealing with the Green Lantern mythos, um, Senator Hammond, for example, or, um, or oh shit, Carl Ferris, um, or Carl Ferris, what if instead of bathing them in green like you bathe every other scene... Why not give a little bit of an orange tint to them? Why not when Carol Ferris is yelling at Hal Jordan, um, we have hints of red? Why not during those love scenes we get a little bit of hints of violet? See where I'm going with this? Um, in, in my opinion, if if you're going to, if you're going to pick an art direction that's based around uh, uh, saturating the visual style of the movie with the mythos, that's the direction I would have gone for. Um, like you using using the colors as kind of a score, um, and as kind of verbs in the setting. That would have been. A hell of a lot less distracting, a little bit more clever, um, and I probably would not have been as bothered by how distracting um, it was in comparison to just bathing everything in green. And when I mean everything in green, I mean every shot in this movie has some sort of at least muted green um, in its palette. Uh, in fact, I think the 
the entire color palette of the movie is purple, and that's only for Evan Sur. Um, red for Sinestro, and it shows up a little bit uh, in the uh, in where they have the the body of Evan Sur. Um, and then there's green, and then there's green. Um, <laughs> and on Earth, it's just painful. Um, the green, the green does work, though. I will admit, um, just as pretty much everything on Oa, the green uh, in the palette really works there. Why? Because there's something to contrast the green. Um, like, okay, I'm I'm gonna stop bitching about the color. You you guys kind of get my point. Um, another thing, uh, when Hal has the flashback. Uh, that, and the, the plane is about, and his plane is about to crash, that reminded me of Secret Origins, which handled that part of the story a lot better, and a lot more cinematic. Um, in fact, a lot of, a lot of the times where I felt that something wasn't working in the movie... Um, I almost longed for for them to have just handled it the way that Secret Origins did. Um, Secret Origins also, by the way, has just a much better opening. A much, much better opening for establishing Hal. And this is supposed to be about Hal. This is an origin story. Um, so... We want to know more about Hal. Uh, having those kind of very disorienting flashbacks um, as the plane was crashing just kind of felt tacky. Uh, and not tacky in the way of, like, uh, next on my hit list is the editor, because it's not nearly as grievous as the pervasive green. <laughs> but... Um, but I, I, I kind of, I do have to bring that up, that that was really clunky, um, extraordinarily clunky. Uh, and like I say, a lot, of, a lot of the times that I felt that something just kind of didn't work, I wanted them to handle it the way that Secret Origins did. Um, and it, it's almost impossible for me to divorce this movie from that comic, even though there's a lot different and Secret Origins is in one continuity and this is in another, um, Secret Origins just its its narrative structure uh, and its color palette and its visual style um, was just light years beyond what was in this movie. Um, and that really does kind of hold the movie back, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, something spoilerish that worked. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of leave it at the, uh, at the Sinestro thing, because I'm already way longer than I'm sure most of you are interested. Um... But the way that they handled the creation of the Yellow Ring, I thought really made sense. And I've heard a lot of fans of the comics um, in Stickham, uh, at least, complain about that. Um, but I thought it worked. It really made sense in the context of the story. Uh, how, how Sinestro basically uh, tries to get the Guardians to fight fear with fear. Um, really, oh, every single, I'm, I'm not joking, every single time that Sinestro was on screen, I was there. Every time the Guardians were on screen, I was there. Every single time the both of them were on screen, I just wanted a movie about Sinestro talking to the Guardians, um, at one point, cause, ah, oh, shit. That was so good. Um, so good. 
Uh, e easily, easily Mark Strong brings it up uh, to a six. Um, I, I would... I would be agreeing with the tomato meter a hell of a lot more if it weren't for Mark Strong. And I'm not even a big Sinestro fan. Um, this movie kind of changed my mind. <laughs> um, but no, the, the Guardians... Um, the, the idea of the Guardians feeling fear was cool. Um, the... The, the fact that Hal kind of challenges the Guardians was a bit cliche, um, but the implications of that scene were cool. Um, the, uh, whoever was playing the Guardians was so good. Um, and when I say so good, I mean so good. Um, when, Hal, uh, when Hal makes the racetrack... A uh, few people kind of complained about that. I don't really see what they were talking about. Kind of made sense that he'd make a racetrack. At least that's what I would have done if I was Hal Jordan. Um, sorry, this this is a little disorganized and long. I'm I'm kind of wrapping it up, but yeah, uh, six out of ten. If you enjoy, uh, if you enjoy comic book movies, go see it. Um, I put it in the same class as Spider-Man. Uh, I've already said all this. Uh, Mark Strong steals the show. Uh, this should have been... This should have had less to do with Parallax and Hector Hammond and a hell of a lot more to do with Sinestro. Um, in fact, you know, keep Parallax. Um, just replace every moment of Hector Hammond with Sinestro. And... Oh, the movie would have been so much better. Uh, that That is another thing, and this is a huge spoiler. Um, kicking Parallax into the sun? Really? The comic book part of my brain, um, the, the comic fan part of my brain, went, oh man, that makes about as much sense as when Superboy Prime punched reality and brought back Jason Todd. Um, it, it, and the logical part of my brain that's really into physics um, and that just like gushes over physics went, that's about as bad as that time that Superman spun the Earth backwards to reverse time. Um, that's really all I have to say on that. Hal should have been sucked into the sun along with Parallax. Um, and I don't care if Sinestro, Kilowog, um, and Toma Ray were there to save him. Nothing could have stopped Hal from getting sucked into the sun's gravity at that point. Um, and when Parallax crashes into the sun, they really want, they really make it look like the sun is about the size of the moon. Which, ugh. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm complaining about physics in a superhero movie, but that, that kind of shit does kind of like stick out like a sore thumb at me. But uh, other than that, I recommend it. I think that the tomato meter is wrong. Um, and yeah, that's that. Peace. Sorry for this review being about half an hour long. Bye.